WBUR Podcasts, Boston. Candice, I have a question for you. Yes. All right, look, it's after Halloween. Mm hmm. When do you start putting up the Christmas lights? Oh, very good question. <laughs> you know, I'm a single and alone, Daryl, so I don't really put up the Christmas lights, but I do have a few decorations to make, you know, the holidays feel a little bit more festive. But let me tell you something. They are not going up before Thanksgiving. Any of Thank y'all, you. Exactly. Any of y'all out there who put these things up before Thanksgiving, you're nuts. You're nuts. For real. Please respect the mac and cheese Super Bowl. For real. Amen. That is the time for us to celebrate with family. We're not talking about pilgrims. No, 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 no. We're talking about good drinks, good food. That's a holiday that needs to be respected. Absolutely. It's all about the Christmas lights away. Put the Christmas lights away. It can wait until after you've eaten. I'm Daryl C. Murphy, and you're listening to The Common. We did it. It's Friday. And what a week it has been. Let me tell you, I am fried. (laughs) All I want to do is relax and have a little fun, you know, maybe go for a nice walk, ride a bike, maybe go out and get something to eat or maybe just stay home and sit on the couch. But if you're feeling the same, stick around because today I'm talking with Candace Springer, assistant director of WBUR City Space and one of the funnest, dopest people I know. She seriously knows everything going on in the Boston area, and she's going to hit us with some highlights. Let's get into it. Candace Springer, I am here as a vessel for the bored and lonely. (laughs) Please pour your wisdom of all things fun into me and tell me what's out here to do this month. Well, you know, Daryl, I am delighted to be talking to you right now, but earlier this week, I was in a mood. Like, I don't know if I was hangry. I don't know if it's the seasonal depression because the days are getting shorter. It's getting dark out there at like 430. Mm -hmm. But I needed a cure. And you know what? I decided I'm going to hop over to the Coolidge Corner in Brookline and I'm going to enjoy November. Do you know what November is? November. Yes. November. I have an idea. Mm hmm. Is it like a showing of, of of various black movies? Black and white movies, actually. <laughs> <laughs> okay. <laughs> so it is their annual series, which they started in 2021 to celebrate noir films, which debuted in the mid-1940s and were sort of like a post-war look at corruption and sort of like the complexities of life and shattered dreams, right? Right. And so it always has, you know, this hard-edged anti-hero who's kind of like down on his luck and then meets a seductive femme fatale and then just all... H-E double hockey sticks breaks. Yes. Yeah. You know? where, where, the, where the protagonist is wearing a trench coat most of the time. Exactly. Exactly. Okay. So all month long, the Coolidge is playing some of the best noir films and neo-noir films. I went to go see Double Indemnity on November 1st, but mm-hmm. I'm also looking forward to Devil in a Blue Dress with Denzel Washington Yo. and Don Cheadle later on in the month. And Jennifer Beale. And Jennifer Beale. Yeah. Ever, yes. Exactly. So it's a mix over at the Coolidge of old noir and neo noir. And also, the Brattle Theater in Cambridge is doing the same thing, but they're picking all 75th anniversary films. So they're doing this really cool Humphrey Bogart double feature on November 13th, which I think you should go check out. Like, I love it Humphrey was just, Bogart movies. He is like the best. And it was just like, you know, I was in a mood, they're in a mood, and then I came out of that film feeling great because I was like, my life isn't as bad as this, you know? So. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> All right, Candace, thank you for those movie recommendations, but I also know that you are a big fan of musicals, and I mm-hmm. know you got something for us. I absolutely do, and thank you so much for giving me the segue and appreciating my Broadway fandom. This month, one of my absolute favorites is coming back to Boston, and it's called Six. We know you know our names and our fame and our faces. Know all about 
the glories and the disgraces. What is six? Well, let me ask you a question. What do you know about Henry VIII? I know that he had a lot of wives and things didn't necessarily uh, work out well for <laughs> any of them. Well, you know what? You have just set up exactly the uh, sort of narrative of this musical. You know, Henry VIII has been described as one of the most charismatic rulers to ever sit on the English throne. And his reign was like one of the most successful in all of English history. But this dude had six wives and he did them all dirty and this, yeah <laughs> this musical is about these wives reclaiming the narrative reclaiming history and it is so exciting like basically take the spice girls put them in a time machine 500 years back into history and have them do a sold out concert where they just get medieval on henry the ace behind and all of the music is the best. It's less of like, you know, hey, there's a story, you know, sit, and then there's a song. It is a rock concert from the moment it opens. If you're looking for a good time, you've got to go see Six. Okay, I would watch that. Spice Girls in a Time Machine putting on a concert. <laughs> and just punching the patriarchy right in the face. Okay, well, we're going to take a quick break, and then when we get back, Candice, we are going to talk about food. Sounds good. Did you kill Marlene Johnson? I think you're one of the first people to have actually asked. From WBUR and ZSP Media, this is Beyond All Repair. A new podcast about an unsolved murder that will leave you questioning everything. Somebody should be in jail for murdering my sister. A woman who's never been believed. As long as they think I have done this, then they're not looking for who actually did this. And that's what makes it a cold case. No, it's a botched case. And a search for the truth, once and for all. Wow, it just gets more interesting. Beyond All Repair. Listen and follow wherever you get your podcasts. Be careful. You're digging in a place that's been very peaceful for a while. Do it anyway. Dig. All right, we're back with WBUR's Candace Springer. Now, I know you got some good food recommendations. I do. I do. So I had the pleasure of going to New Orleans this summer, which is like one of my favorite places for like an epic, epic food journey. Listen, listen, who you telling? <laughs> <laughs> right? I mean, it is one of the absolute best. But to my surprise, I have discovered that you can get a little taste of NOLA right in downtown Boston. And this place is called French Quarter. It's mm -hmm. right next to a bunch of theaters. So if you're having a, you know, sort of you're going to see a show, hop on over to French Quarter and they've got everything. They've got shrimp and grits. They've got jambalaya. They've got gumbo. The chef is from New Orleans. So it's, it is legit. You have to end with the beignets. They are so doughy, fluffy, and warm. Get the powdered sugar all over your face. Get it all over your clothes. Embrace it. <laughs> Hell yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and of course, they've got all the signature cocktails as well. So I started off with a hurricane, but they also have a classic Sazerac. And then they've got some where they just took a little spin on some of the tastes and the flavors of the city. So highly recommend that. I love that so much. You know, I actually got to go out recently. And I tried a couple places. Mm -hmm. These were places I've seen on Instagram. You know, shout out to all the Boston uh, food influencers out yeah, there. Yeah, y'all are doing it. Thank you for so real. much for all the scoop. For real. Because, you know, if that this is one of those things where that narrative gets out there that Boston is not really a great food city. And Lies. And starting to feel like, yeah, that that's, I don't know if that's true. It's not. <laughs> I'm telling you, it's not. All right. Well, Miss... Candice Springer, Assistant Director of City Space, wink, wink. <laughs> what other events can you suggest for the people out there? 
Okay, well, coming up at City Space, uh, we have an amazing tap dancer named Ayadeli Cassell. She's a Drama Desk winner. She's award-nominated, a Harvard Radcliffe Fellow. And she is going to come to talk about sort of her journey trying to break the glass ceiling for women in the tap world. And I think she's also going to give us a little performance. She actually was recently the tap choreographer for Funny Girl, uh, the revival on Broadway. So we're really looking forward to having her at City Space. But also, I just wanted to plug that tickets for WBUR's annual reading of A Christmas Carol go on sale a week before Thanksgiving. And and I think, Daryl, are you going to be? Yes, I am. Yeah. Yes, I am. For I... the first time ever. I think you're going to be playing multiple parts, but you've got the end, which is like, I mean, it's it's the big role. It's the big role. Yeah, I'm feeling a lot of pressure, <laughs> but I got to deliver. I got to, I got to, I'm going to turn it on for the people. And because I'm up there with some heavy hitters. I'm up there with uh, Magna, right? Magna Chakrabarty. Jack Lepiars. Yep. Tiziana Deering. So. This event is beloved uh, with WBUR friends and fans, and all the proceeds support Rosie's Place, which is the first women's shelter ever in the United States, and it's here in Boston. So it's like Mm -hmm. a really wonderful, festive event, and it's for a good cause. So get your tickets before Thanksgiving, because it's gonna sell out. You heard it. Well, Candice... I could sit here and talk with you all day. As you know. <laughs> same, same. It's <laughs> so always a thank pleasure. You, thank you. Thank you as always for coming through and just kicking it with us. You know? Thank you. Can't wait to be back. That's WBUR City Space Assistant Director Candace Springer. And that's all for today. Thank you so, so much for joining us for our first week of The Common. We are so excited to be here talking news and culture with you all five days a week, every week. Now, we'll be back with more on Monday. But in the meantime, hit us up. We're on Twitter at WBUR The Common, and you can email us at thecommon at WBUR.org. For now, I'm Daryl C. Murphy, and I'll talk to you next week.